Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today and for taking the time to attend today's webinar, Colombia Storytelling and Mega Diverse Country. My name is Anna Kamerad. I work um, at the Emerging Destinations team. We are a sales and marketing representation company in U US and Canada. And today I will be your co-host. And in a few more seconds, I will introduce uh, our guest, uh, Mr. Guillermo Villoria. Uh, from Colombian Journeys. But um, before we start with our webinar, let me introduce uh, our portfolio in case any of you is new to our webinars. At Emerging Destinations, uh, we had a big, diverse and adventure portfolio, mainly in three big regions, Africa, Europe and Americas. In the Americas region, we are proud of representing in North America, Canyon Madness Ranch, an outdoor adventure playground in Northeast New Mexico. In Central America, we represent Travel Pioneers, a boutique DMC offering land services in Costa Rica and neighbor countries. And then in South America, we represent Grand Hotel Lux, featuring four uh, luxury hotels in Argentina, Buenos Aires and the Iwasu Falls, and uh, Punta del Este in Uruguay. Then in Chile, we represent Las Torres Reserve or Las Torres Patagonia, which features uh, trekking circuits along the W circuit in Torres del Paine National Park, as well as a beautiful hotel named Hotel Las Torres, located right at the base of the massive. We also represent in Chile, Chile Concept, Concept, sorry, a DMC offering land services in the entire country. Then we have Enchanted Expeditions in Ecuador offering DMC services in mainland Ecuador, as well as two um, cruises in the Galapagos Islands and one lodge in Santa Cruz Island in, in the Galapagos. And finally, Colombian Journeys, a DMC offering services in Colombia and our um, host today. We are really very happy of having these cool companies in cool places with us. In case you have any questions about any of those companies or destinations, maybe you have a brochure request or need digital material or have a booking request for a festive season, please feel free to reach out to me after the webinar. You can see my email address at the bottom of your screen now. Before starting with the webinar, uh, I would love to give you a few housekeeping items for um, go to over go to webinar. The first thing is that all attendees will be mute. Uh, and the second thing is that this webinar is being recorded. So is, if you need to step away, or maybe answer the phone, don't worry about that. We are recording this webinar. We will be sending all of you the playback in the upcoming days. And we will be also uploading this recording in our website, emergingdestinations.com, as well as on our YouTube channel, Emerging Destinations. We encourage you sending any questions. You can do that on the GoToWebinar control panel on your right. At the end of the presentation, Guillermo will be answering them. In case we run out of time, we will make sure to include all your questions with all the answers in the follow-up email that we will be sending you by email um, in the upcoming days. Um, so let's start with our webinar. Please help me welcome Mr. Guillermo Villoria. He, he is the general manager of Colombian Journeys. Over to you, Guillermo. Well, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, first, I want to check if you can see uh, my presentation right now. One Not second. yet. Not yet, okay. So, one second. Now, now can you see the presentation? Yes, of course. Yes, we can. Okay, well, thank you very much for your introduction. Anna, it's a pleasure to be here today to present this fantastic country. 
My name is Guillermo Villore. I am the general manager and one of the owners of Colombian Journeys. Uh, actually, I am not Colombian. It's a secret that we have to keep here between us because I am Venezuelan, but I'm living in this country for a long time ago, almost 12 years, uh, and which, which I fall in love. I love this country. And, and, and today, well, we're going to talk about this amazing country and the 1000 Rhythms country. First, I want to talk about um, COVID-19 because, of course, you know, it's something that we have to say, we have to, to communicate to you. Um, this is a statistic, daily statistics of, 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 of cases or new cases. As you can see, the uh, COVID-19 is controlled. With the last wave was in between May and June, but today uh, the COVID-19 is controlled, something that is very positive. Second one, if you see, you know that um, daily uh, deaths are really down compared to the last three waves. So we are getting to the numbers we had when the pandemic started. So that's really positive. And that's because the uh, vaccination, uh, it's going really well. Uh, of course, maybe not like other parts of the world that are going faster, but I think at least, you know, we have more than 32,000, uh, 32 million doses apply. And um, 70% of those doses are 35% uh, Pfizer, 35% uh, Sinovac, and the rest we have AstraZeneca, Modern Ingenious and Sophie. That is really good because we have a mix of vaccines and coronavirus. As you can see, um, uh, the, the vaccination is going really well. And from those 32 uh, first doses apply, 50% uh, have two doses. So the government is expecting that um, we should be vaccinated, all the population, at least 70% uh, before December. And I hope so, you know that what happened. So in general today to, to come to Colombia is very easy. We are open to business, no PCR tests, no vaccination uh, certificate. So today in Colombia is completely open. Uh, everything is working, hotels, airlines, uh, venues, uh, restaurants, experience, etc. All the countries completely 100% activated. Of course, we have uh, protocols, biosecurity protocols. You have to wear your mask, clean your hands, or sanitize your hands everywhere. And then when you will find hell everywhere. And of course, try to keep distance. But in general, the, 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 the life is normal. Of course, not like before pandemic, but uh, normal uh, as you can, you know, you can say. So now I'm going to start uh, with a uh, Colombian journeys first to talk about my company. Uh, we are a company that started in 2006. Actually, we start in Venezuela 20 years ago, 21 years ago. Uh, and then in, in 2006, we opened uh, Colombian Journeys. We are a B2B company. We only work with uh, uh, tour operators, travel agencies around the world. We don't uh, handle direct clients. And we started in 2006 and start growing and growing. And, and of course, I mean, we fall in love with this fantastic country. And, and, and it was really interesting to see how Colombia changed during the time, because in, is, you, can, you can, I mean, if you compare 2006 to 2021, it's a completely different country. So it was amazing to experience, you know, the, when, when Colombia started to open into the world, the, the image of security started to improve. And, 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 and then in 2019, uh, we were 40 people. We handled uh, 5,000 clients. Um, and, and of course, I mean, we were growing very fast and we were very happy about it. Then the pandemic uh, started and, and well, we are here surviving, but very optimistic and positive. So the future, because we think Colombia it's, is a, is a, has a huge potential for the future. This is my team. I am the only man, as you can see. So um, I'm very happy with my team. This is the leaders that have been working with me since a long time ago. We keep the leader uh, team uh, because we thought it was very important to keep the knowledge, the commitment, the experience. So when the business started again, we have all the right people ready to receive your clients. In terms of connection, sorry for the Spanish, but I, I tried to find something official from the government, but they send everything in Spanish. But today, uh, the, 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 the positive thing is that now we are 60% um, 
um, the capacity compared to 2019. So we are recovering uh, uh, the international connectivity with the world. And that's fantastic because, well, of course, it's still, you know, some to, to, to get to the 100%, but at least uh, we are almost we are on 62%. Today, we have a lot of flights to different parts of the world. And of course, we United States is our first market, Colombia. Uh, and for us in Colombia, the United States is the first market in terms of tourism. So um, um, if you see here, we have different uh, frequencies from, uh, from eight cities of Colombia to 19 cities in the United States. In total, we have 43 routes per week. So from Bogota, we have to Atlanta, we have uh, to Dallas, to Fort Lauderdale, uh, to Houston, to Los Angeles, to Miami, New York, Orlando, Newark, um, from well, San Juan in Puerto Rico, Washington, uh, from Medellin, that is a city that is growing very fast. We have to fly directly to Fort Lauderdale, to Miami, New York, Orlando. From Cali is one of the is the third biggest city in the country. Uh, flies to Fort Lauderdale, Miami, Orlando, New York, Barranquilla in, in the coast next to Cartagena. We have direct flights to Miami and Fort Lauderdale. Cartagena has direct flights. The most famous city it directly flies to Fort Lauderdale, New York, and Miami. Bucaramanga, Armenia, etc. So as you can see, we have a total of 43 routes to 19 uh, cities in the United States. So it's really easy to come to Colombia with American Airlines, United Continental, with Delta Airlines, Avianca, also uh, the Colombian airline, with Spirit starting to fly uh, this month. We have a uh, JetBlue. So in general, so as you can see, we have a lot of options in a lot of cities that you can come, that you can take your airplane to come to Colombia or connect in the most important uh, connection uh, destinations like Atlanta, Miami, Dallas, etc. So now we're going to start about Colombia. Um, well, Colombia is a huge country and something that is amazing about uh, Colombia is that we are the only country in South America that has Caribbean and Pacific. We have more than 311 ecosystems. Uh, we have a tropical weather. However, I will explain you later about the, the temperature um, because it's depending on the level because three mountain range finish in Colombia. So of course that makes that Colombia is a very accidental a country. So to move from one point to the other was very difficult, but even that we are close to the equator, uh, people think that we have a nice weather everywhere. For example, I am based in Bogota and we are at 2,600 meters of the sea level. And the weather here is uh, average uh, Celsius of between 12 and 18. We have three deserts and 50 million people. We are located in the north of South America. We are 50 million. Uh, our official language, of course, is Spanish. The local uh, currency is pesos Colombian. And this is the temperature that I can mention. As you can see, in the middle of the country, well, where all the range, uh, the Andes finish, all the tree range of, of the Andes finish, you see it, but the, 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 the weather change uh, different than the plains of Colombia in the south or maybe in the coast of Colombia in the Pacific and the Caribbean. So, however, Please keep in mind, you can come to Colombia any time of the year. We have dry season and a rain season. Dry season is between November and May, and rain season between June and October. But these rains are like short rains, uh, uh, small showers during the day, and then the sun. So finally, you can travel to Colombia any time of the year, taking in consideration those seasons. We are the second country um, mega diverse in the world after Brazil. We are the first one in diversity of birds and orchids. We are the first in biodiversity in native species of fruit and trees. You can eat a different fruit every day of the year. We, have, we are the second country in plants, amphibians, and fish. We have the third country in diversity in reptiles and puffs, and the fourth country in mammals. In terms of multicultural country, we are 86 white and mestizos, 9.5 Afro-descendants, something that is really nice because we have a huge a heritage and, 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 and um, heritage of, of culture and tradition from the, from the slave that arrived to Colombia a long time ago. And we have 4.4 indigenous, a lot of communities around the country, and gypsies approximately like 0 0.01. So we have 68 native languages, 102 indigenous community, 19 UNESCO heritage, and that's very important to keep in mind because that will encourage, that will improve your, your trip. 
And finally, 1,000 musical rhythms that will go with you every part of the country. If you go to Cali, you will play salsa. If you go to the Caribbean, you will dance champ champeta, reggaeton, merengue. In the centers of Bogota is a mix of the culture. So here you can dance anything you want. So this is like the multi world country. This is UNESCO World Heritage, some of the most important. We have three natural, one is mixed. We have a, a cultural, very important, the, the, the fortification uh, in Cartagena, uh, the wall city, the archaeology area in the south, some, some of the beautiful little towns we have from the colonial period. We have the intangible um, world heritage, like the Carnaval of Barranquilla, that is fantastic every February. We have the traditional knowledge of the Jaguar champs of Yurupi. We have the cultural space of Palenque and San Basilio, the black and white carnivals that happen every year in January in the south of Colombia. So we have, I mean, a lot of things to visit here. Then this is just a very short explanation of how to build a nice itinerary. And we always encourage or uh, um, uh, explain to our clients that we think the best will be to start in Bogota, the capital, the mix of culture, uh, maybe approximately like two nights. Here you have the best museum, the gold museum. You have fantastic gastronomy and a mix of culture. Finally, Cartagena, of course, you have to finish in Cartagena. It's like the close a city for an itinerary in Colombia. Then in the middle, you can include different things. Today, I'm going to focus in Bogota and Cartagena, of course. And then in the middle, I will talk about Medellin, so a city that is becoming very famous every year, and, and we call it the transformation in social city, and the coffee region. Of course, everybody in the world knows Colombia for the, the coffee. So it makes sense if you come for the first time to Colombia to go to the coffee region. So let's start with Bogota in the heart of Colombia, here in the middle of the Andes. This is Bogota, a rival city, the capital of Colombia. We are 8 million people living here and we are 2,600 meters of the sea level. We have different weathers during the day. We can have in the morning a freezing, in the afternoon sun, and then in the night, sometimes hell. So it's really, really nice city. And the most point in the, the points of interest here are the Gold Museum that I mentioned before, Botero Museum. Botero is a very famous a painter sculpture from Colombia. Uh, actually, he's from Medellin, but the, his, his uh, best museum is located here. To visit the colonial center of La Candelaria in downtown, that is fantastic. The nightlife and gastronomy is incredible. And then some of the activities you can do in the north of the city, like Guatavita, that is very famous, and I will talk about this later, and the Sipaquira Salt Cathedral. Average 14 Celsius. This is the rain during the year. This is Bogota. The center of Bogota, Gold Museum, fantastic to visit, something that you cannot miss. Botero Museum, this is the Montserrat, a little a church in the mountains. This is the cable car you use to go there. And then in from there is a point of view to see the huge size of Bogota. Usaque a little town full of gastronomy, of restaurant, fantastic for gastronomy. Sipaquira, a little town in the north where is located the Salt Cathedral. One of the most important things to do here is a Salt Cathedral that was constructed inside in a salt mine. So it's a really nice thing to do. Guatavita, a lake that is very important, uh, is part of the gold legend. And the gold legend was a legend from the indigenous community that live here long time ago and the Spanish find out that they were thrown out gold pieces in this lake as a ceremony to the god. So some of those pieces you will find in the gold museum and that's why it's so important. We have different tours here. We've been past tour, uh, go to a neighborhood that was very dangerous and today the gang members are doing tours, uh, different molecular coffee tasting, the fruit tour in Paloquemal, fantastic to see all the 365 fruits, the local flavors, you know, you can find different kinds of gastronomy, salsa tours, graffiti in bike tours, tejo, a really nice game that when, if you visit me, I will take you to see how it is. Well, uh, Bogota tours, art tours, Esmeralda experience. I don't know if you know, but one of the most famous Esmeraldas in the world are from Colombia. So we have an Esmeralda experience here in Bogota. So then we're going to Medellin. The, no, the, the city, the, um, the people say that it's, the, it's known by the flowers. Uh, this city is in the north of Bogota here in this area. Okay, in the north of Colombia, close to the Pacific, and is 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 the innovative city. Uh, Fernando Botero is from here, 
Um, and Colombia is called the city the spring forever. The weather is amazing. It's fantastic. All year round is average Celsius 21. So it's amazing. Nice gastronomy and a lot of things to do. This is the average temperature. Medellin, fantastic. The main square of the city has a, a, a potato sculpture a for free, more than 20 that you can go and see. Cable cars to the favelas, something that is very interesting for people who haven't been to a favela to take a cable car or the escalators, something that is completely innovative because it, it, it no, but no, no favela in Latin America has escalators to take to, to get to your house, graffiti tours. Um, it's the only city we saw in Colombia, so they are very proud about it. And the flower um, area, because uh, all the flowers, uh, by the way, most of the roses that you buy in the United States are from this area. In San Valentine's, uh, Colombia exports thousands of thousands of flowers. The flower festival or fair that is amazing in August, one of the things that we uh, um, um, that we, we encourage clients to come, that we recommend. This is one of the big activities to do next to Medellin, El Peñol en Guatapé. This is a big rock that you can take these, these stairs to get to the top. Um, it's more than 752 uh, steps that you have to, to take to get there. And then you see this beautiful view. Go to visit this uh, nice little town called Guatapé, very famous for these decorations in the houses. Santa Fe, Antioquia, another little beautiful town from the colony period that is close from to Medellin. Jardin, another beautiful place to visit and, and that is close to Medellin. So coffee, of course, uh, in Colombia, there is coffee everywhere. People think that the only place to see coffee is the coffee region, but no, it's everywhere. So in Medellin, in the north, for example, in Santa Marta, in the coast, there is a coffee region area. So in Medellin, you can visit um, farms. We have this community project with this chef that is Canadian, French, that is, doing, do, is giving cooking class in Medellin in a favela called Buenos Aires. This is the Buenos Aires favela with, with this uh, transportation system. We have different experience, social project. You can go to understand or idea. To, 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 or idea to offer or to, to all the kind of things that we do here are to show you how a city that was very dangerous can be a, a cosmopolitan, modern and safe city. Because you know that uh, Pablo Escobar, David, the most famous drug dealer of Colombia, uh, was from here. And, and that time was very dangerous. But today they finally achieved to have a security, nice and amazing city. Coffee region. Fantastic place to be is the heart of Colombia. Let me show you where it is. It's in the south of Medellin. So it's a really good combination when you finish, for example, coffee region after Bogota, go to Medellin and finish in the, um, in the coast. Uh, it's in the coffee region, it's a, it's a combination of three cities, Pereira, Armenia, Manizales. The colorfuls of the village is one of the main things to see. Uh, by El Cocora, where is the Wex Farm, uh, the, the highest palms in the world, and Coffee Farm, of course, and amazing tropical nature. So the weather is really nice. It's similar to Medellin. This is the landscape that you're going to see during your trips to the different areas, coffee plantations, and here's the coffee farmers still to take the coffee being from the plant. They are not using machines, it's very manual. And those guys or those uh, agricultures that take the coffee then bring that to the coffee farms. And, 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 and the coffee farm has to pay something depending on the kilograms they recollect. This is a Cocora Valley and the Wex Palms, endemic. This is this palm is not in all the part of the world, only here. This is the colorful village that I mentioned. Finlandia is another little. And here you have a lot of things to do, like bear watching. Uh, bike circuits, go to visit the garden of the little houses, um, workshop in Finlandia of basketry, uh, have they to see orchids, uh, hair balloon, uh, cacao experience, have they horseback riding, fruit tasting in Sasawa, that is a nice hotel, hike de la Carbonera, Wax Palm Empire. This is another area that you can see the Wax Palm, the Wax Palms, and is really nice, private, because you have to go by four by four. And then, I mean, different things to do. I mean, coffee region is, man, there's a lot of things to do. It's fantastic. Finally, we go to the north of Colombia. 
Cartagena, the most known destination. One of my favorite places in Colombia is the best things to do when you finish your itinerary because it's Caribbean, the style of the city, the islands are beautiful, and the historical uh, um, uh, is very important for the story of South America. This fortification, the largest fortification in America is located here, the San Felipe Fort, uh, and the, all, the, what ha all that happens inside the wall city, it's amazing, all the boutique hotels. So the weather, of course, Caribbean, um, is the same as the Caribbean uh, seasons, you know, uh, between July, October rain season, and after November, December until May is the uh, dry season. This is Cartagena, beautiful. I think one of the best things to do here is to walk inside the, the, the city in the streets, look the stores, the people, the, all the things they are selling, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and so, and it's free. It's amazing. It's something amazing that I really enjoy a lot every time I go there. This is another city of Cartagena, the San Felipe fortification. Uh, of course, you know, this is one of the places of Colombia has a huge uh, black community that, of course, are uh, taking or uh, they are, um, we, they're, of course, they, they give, you know, that taste of uh, traditions, food, culinary uh, experience, etc. from from the uh, slave uh, descendants. Um, and of course, you know, churches everywhere. This is the Popa convent that is in the top, uh, the, the highest point of Cartagena. It's at 200 meters. And you can see the size of Cartagena. This is the modern area. Something that we really, we don't, we do not recommend because it's just, you know, very modern. I think the best thing to do is to stay inside the wall city. Getsemani, another part of the colonial area, beautiful place to, to stay. By the way, they are constructing a four season in this area that should be ready next year or 2013. Graffiti art tours, street food tours, local market, uh, and then go to cooking classes. We have a run coffee tasting on board. We have a lot of activities with catamarans, boats, speed boats to go to the islands or to spend a day in the boat in some of the areas that you can uh, go uh, and swim, etc. Cooking classes in La Boquilla, one of the fisherman areas, the coconut workshop in La Boquilla, kayak city tours. You can visit the National Aviary of Colombia that is very important because this uh, aviary is, re is recollecting and protecting all the birds that are part of the traffic. Yeah, you know, I don't know if I mentioned before, but yes, I, I said that we are the first country to arrive with more than 1,792 species in Colombia. Uh, we are the, the home of these species. So, of course, you know, it's, there's a big market uh, or, uh, or black traffic uh, to, to, to sell these birds. So this aviary is taking those um, birds that, that, that were confiscated uh, in, in, in some port or airport, etc. Helicopter overflight. And finally, of course, after you visit this amazing country, you smell the coffee, that you taste the coffee, that you dance and go to Bogota, Gold Museum, you know, Indian community, uh, go to Medellin, transformation, understand the, the history of Colombia and the storytelling. And finally, Cartagena, uh, you need, you know, and you deserve to stay a couple of days in the islands. This is the Rosario, it's a national park in front of Cartagena. There are different kind of properties that you can stay here, like private houses or hotels, for example, right now in December, they're going to inaugurate the, the Sofitel Baru, something that we, we are very happy about it. Then, of course, I mean, these islands are beautiful, crystal waters, because it's very, it's very important to explain you and to be honest with you, uh, the beaches in Cartagena are not so nice. So it's, it's important that you take a boat for a full day tour or to stay in the islands. So this is one of the places you can spend the day. We have different options. And finally, I have only one minute because uh, I have to fish in 25 and I think I am going well. So finally, I'm going to talk about all the events that Colombia has and that's why I think it's important to keep this in mind because if your clients are coming in this time, it's, it's fantastic to include that. So we have the most important are the Barranquilla Carnival in February, the Black and White Carnival in January, uh, the Flower Festival in August, 
And the rest of the year, you have different activities like, for example, uh, the festival, uh, eye festival. There is the, the movie theaters and uh, uh, in Cartagena, you have them, uh, for example, the jazz um, uh, festival in, in, in Montpox, uh, the World Salsa Festival in Cali in September. So, I mean, there is a lot of things happening during the year here in Colombia. So I think this is my presentation, and I don't know, well, Anna, uh, I think that's it. And I'm going to put my camera. Thank you so much, Guillermo, for your presentation. Um, I'm sure everyone loved it. I was in Colombia in 1995. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> you did it great. I was in Colombia in 1996 with my family. We were visiting Bogota, Cartagena, and the Rosario Islands. And after seeing your presentation, I have to tell you that I'm ready to go again. So I assume that all our attendees have their suitcases ready to go also. So well, you are all my guests. Be my it's guest. a beautiful, beautiful country. Yes, it is. It is. It is. So I have the first question for you, and of course, is related to COVID-19. Sorry about that, but it's the topic on the last month. I... Um, can you let us know which are the requirements to enter Colombia right now? Maybe this is changing all the time, but right now, what are the requirements? That's a really good question because I didn't mention at the beginning, so I'm sorry about that. But uh, we are open, completely open, in what, and that means that you don't need a PCR test or certification. Uh, so today there is no restriction or quarantine or whatever. So it's kind of like, it's, it's the same as before pandemic. You just fly, get in, and that's it. No, any request, any 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 regulation or, or whatever. Yeah. Okay, so we don't even need to present a certification or something that uh, certificate that we are uh, vaccinated nothing no nothing today you don't need a pcr or negative pcr or uh, a vaccination certification okay okay thank you then the following question that we have for you is from nancy and uh, she's asking is the city of Cali is part of the coffee triangle. No, no, the Cali is in is in a valley in Valle del Cauca that is close to the Pacific and is not part of the coffee region. However, it's close because a coffee region is divided in three cities. In the north, you have Manizales, in the middle, Pereira, and the south, Armenia. That's the last city of the coffee region. And from there to Cali is maybe like two hours or less. But it's not part of the coffee region because uh, Cali is in the plains of Colombia and there is no coffee in this area. Okay, however, do you recommend to spend some days in Cali? Are there any attractions no. that you will? It's, you well, can... Cali is very famous for the salsa, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, we call it, well, it's salsa casino. It's a different kind of salsa, but uh, it's very important. Uh, it's like one of the most important music in Colombia, the salsa. Uh, however, Cali, you know, when you don't, I mean, Colombia is a huge country. So we recommend always to visit the most important things like the capital, Medellin, coffee region, uh, maybe the south, the archaeology area, uh, the Pacific, the coast. Um, Cali is not so important to visit. I mean, if you want to do something specific there. So it's a nice city. Uh, there is mm -hmm. some things to do, a lot of sugar canes, plantations, that's also very interesting mm -hmm. about this area. Uh, however, we think it's not like if you are going coming to Colombia for the first time, we recommend to go to other parts than Cali. Okay. Okay. Then I have another question regarding is um, the migration form, is it required to enter Colombia? Yes, before you, you come to Colombia, you have to follow a, 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 a form, online form from the immigration mm -hmm. uh, department. You can do it between, you know, two hours and 70, no, 20, uh, two hours to 24 hours. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and that's it. That's the only thing that you have to do before you, you come to Colombia. Fill it out this information in the online form. Okay, so we need to fill out this form before we leave our country. 
Yes, yes. And they ask you, you know, like right. name, passport, and number, and, and last name, and, and and how many days are you going to be here? If you have a certificate, if you if you if you have a vaccination certification, things like that. It's just normal information, but it's important to do it. I mean, that doesn't mean if you don't do it, you, you're you're not going to have problem in Colombia, but the process is going to be uh, slower. Okay, so that's why the government is asking, you know, clients, however, you know, the airlines will send you the information when they send you the, the check-in, et cetera, they will ask you to, to do this. Um, so, but, and, 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 we, and we recommend to do it because your, your immigration process is going to be faster. Great. Then regarding active, active travelers who like doing, for example, hiking, biking, rafting, et cetera, what are the regions or the cities or the areas that they should visit to experience or to do those sort of active uh, sports or activities? Well, that's a big question because Colombia has, a, I mean, all those activities you can do in different parts of the country. For example, close to Bogota, well, cycling is one of the most important sports in Colombia. You know that Colombia is very famous around the world because the, the most important, si uh, how, how you say, cycling? So the, or biking? Biking guys, you know, well, the most important in the world are from Colombia. So everybody's doing cycling. So close to Bogota, the Cof region is fantastic for, for cycling, Medellin too. Um, all the Andes, uh, where is, you know, you have different levels, is fantastic mm -hmm. for cycling. Hiking, of course, you know, in Los Andes, also close to the coffee region, in the south, in the archaeology area too, um, in Medellin, close to Medellin too. In the north of Bogota, approximately like nine hours by car, you can go to El Cocuy, it's one of the highest points of Colombia, and it's a fantastic place to do trekking. I've been there and I went to 5,200 meters over the sea level to see the snow uh, in, in the top of the mountain, um, and it's a really hard trekking but it's one of the best places to do trekking. I mean, Colombia is a accidental country, so for trekking, you have different things to do. For cycling, like I mentioned before, you know, all the countries is doing cycling, so there is a lot of places to do it, but one of the best places, I think so, is the coffee region, because you mix cycling with beautiful landscape, nice uh, roads, and a lot of things to do and activities. By the way, in the south of Coffee Region, there is a hotel focused only in cycling. They have all the things and the facilities for cycling uh, for bikers. And, um, and what else you ask about rafting? You rafting. can do, well, yeah, there is uh, different places to do rafting. One is called um, Marichara in, in Bucaramanga and San Gil. Uh, it's called the extreme area of Colombia. You can do rafting and different extreme exports. Also in the south, right now, we have a fantastic place to do rafting with a, a, a guy, uh, ex-FARC. Uh, FARC is the gorillas of Colombia. They, after they left the, 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 the FARC, uh, they became, they, they did this company, rafting company, in one of the most beautiful rivers in Colombia. And it's incredible. It's a social project, and they want to work a work uh, because of that project. And today they are offering rafting in this river and they are ex far so they're ex gorillas. So it's, it's, it's a fantastic thing to do because if you go to the south of Colombia, very, by the by the way, you have to keep in mind that this area is basic, okay? So it's, if, if, you, if you want a client who wants to do rafting but have like good facilities, uh, that's not the area. We have to go to the north in San Gil. Um, However, I think it's a very nice experience to do rafting with ex gorillas. Okay, perfect. And even if you, of course, can suggest or, or send uh, the advice or sample itineraries, if they send to you, for example, information about budget, length of stay, interest of their clients, you can customize and, and prepare an itinerary especially for each sort of profile or, or client interest. Well, well, that that's our daily work. You know, we are a tailor-made company, yeah. uh, DMC. So, I mean, we, we do whatever our clients want. Perfect. Then the following question I have uh, is regarding the safety of visiting Medellin or Cartagena. Well, Cartagena is the safest, the safest, uh, safety a, a city in Colombia. So in terms mm -hmm. of security, you don't have any problem with Cartagena. Uh, regarding Medellin, uh, uh, 
you know, I, I want to explain more about this because, of course, you know, Medellin was very, very famous in the world 20 years ago because of the drug dealers and all the situation that happened there. But today is a safe city. Of course, like any other city in the world, you have to be careful if you go to the downtown, you know, with your camera, sometimes with your wallet, things like that. But finally, today we haven't, you know, we have been operating Colombia since 2006, and we never had an issue in Medellin. So, um, in, in general, I think you know the situation in Colombia in general and all the country is really good compared to 10, 15, 20 years ago. And that doesn't mean that you don't have the risk that something happened. Of course, always like here, we're in Paris, New York, and whatever part of the world, you have to be carefully. But in general, the safety, the security improved a lot uh, since 10 years ago and including cool. Medellin and Cartagena. Great, and how many days do you recommend to, to spend in Medellin? Normally, we recommend two nights. I think with two nights, you cover the most important things of Medellin. However, mm -hmm. if you want to extend your, your, your days in, in Medellin, we have a lot of things to do. And today, I sometimes explain that Medellin is kind of like Toscana. When you go to Toscana, you don't stay in, in, in Florencia, you go and stay in different little towns close to Florencia. It's the same thing with Medellin. If you want to stay more time, there is a lot of little beautiful uh, towns close to Medellin that you can go by car or with private transfer, and there is nice uh, hotels to stay there. So, but in general, uh, the classic itinerary will be to stay there for two nights, and you cover the most important things, the highlights. Great. Okay. And um, is there any glamping option in in any city in Colombia? Yes, today there is glamping close to Medellin and Guatapé. Mm -hmm. The big rock I showed you in the presentation, yes, we have a couple options there. We have in the coffee region, we have close to Bogota, and we have some options in the coast uh, next to the National Park Tairona. So yes, there is a lot of options of uh, glamping in Colombia right now. Okay, great. Thank you for that. And then the following question. I didn't know that. Uh, what are the areas for a cigar tour? For cigar tour? Mm -hmm. Is Colombia known for cigar tours? No. Well, if no. somebody else is doing it, I have to check and research, but no, we don't have cigar tours okay. in Colombia. We have, okay. we have a, we have a, we have a, a rum testing experience with tabacos but we don't have tabacos in colombia i mean maybe there is some fabrics small boutique uh, companies doing it but it's not something you know that that we sell or offer right now but i'm going okay. to check yeah okay i never heard about cigar tours in colombia but me too <laughs> we will check and let you and let cecil well, know if uh, actually in cartagena like in Cartagena, there is a very famous place, a Cuban place, that you can go drink rum, and they have all different kind of cigars uh, from Cuba and from different part of the world. Uh, but it's a store, okay, that sells cigars and, and sells mm -hmm. rum, and, and the idea is to stay there, smoke cigars, etc., etc. But we don't have a tour of cigars in Colombia. Okay. Okay, uh, the two last questions before we leave. Um, how is access for people with mobility challenges? Well, today um, we have a research for, for that kind of clients. Of course, we have to focus in the most important cities because when you go to uh, medium or small cities where the proprieties are not so modern or or big chains that they have all the facilities is harder. So we have tours for, for this kind of clients, but we focus in the main destinations like Bogota, Medellin, and Cartagena. Okay, okay, perfect. And the last question I have for you, I think that you already mentioned this when you started your presentation, but if you can remind us how many days could you recommend in a sort of a normal itinerary, including Bogota, Cartagena, Medellin, and the Coffee Triangle? Well, I will suggest two nights in Bogota, okay? Mm -hmm. You start with Bogota, two nights in the Coffee Region, two nights Medellin, and three nights Cartagena. That will be like the classic, and you are covering the most important of Colombia. Okay, so, so the total, minimum that you recommend is 10 days, nine nights, to cover those well, four 
area. The minimum, the minimum will be, I mean, the classic itinerary is without Medellin. So two nights Bogota, okay. two nights coffee region, and three nights in Cartagena. So that's uh, seven nights, eight days. That's like the, the, the classic itinerary. But today more people is asking to include Medellin and you can combine with coffee region really good. So I will suggest to include two nights more if the client have the time and the budget, of course. Okay, okay, perfect. So I think this is all for today. We don't have more questions here. Just as a wrap up, I will leave the, the last minute to you, Guillermo, but for our advisors connected today, and uh, just to remind them that we will be sending all of you the follow up, um, a follow up email in the upcoming days. In these follow up emails, you will get the recording of, um, of this webinar, you will get the presentation, the PowerPoint presentation. <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> the Q and A, <coughs> and sample itineraries. <coughs> Don't worry, Anna. <laughs> have, have have a glass of water. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. And we will be uploading the recording on our YouTube channel as well as on our uh, website. So over to you, Guillermo. Well, thank you very much for your attention. I hope you enjoy my presentation. Actually, when somebody talk about the the the, the market of Lia, um, we handicap a, a clients. A, in the past, we had a blind group that was very challenging, but a, everything went very well. So, so um, we are here for you at DMC, 100% B2B, focused to be your eyes, your arms, your legs, and everything in this country. And if you need something, just let us know through Anna. Uh, you have our contact details and, and we will be more than happy to help you to first create the product, of course, training if you want to. And finally, if we start working together, operate your clients when they arrive here. I'm sure they're going to go back. Be, I mean, very happy. This is a storytelling country and Colombia changed your life after you are here. Thank you so much, Guillermo. Thank you, everyone, for connecting today and hope you all have a great afternoon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care.